Uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor, we're live. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to call this Development Services Committee meeting to order. And I'm going to read the land acknowledgement. The township of the Oromodonte acknowledges that we are situated on the traditional land of the Anishinaabe people and the ancestral territory of the Huron-Wendat. The Anishinaabe people include the Ottawa, the Ojibwe, the Potawatomi nations collectively known as the Three Fires Confederacy. It continues today as a home for diverse Indigenous peoples, including the historic Métis community in Penetanguishene. The Ashtonabe people continue to have an enduring relationship with this land, specifically the Chippewas of the Rama First Nation, the Chippewa Tri-Council, and the William Treaties First Nations. The Huron-Wendat Nation also continues to pay respect and protect their ancestors and heritage on this land. We honor the Indigenous history and culture that has thrived for millennia in this territory and the treaties that bind us together as partners in the spirit of a shared, sustainable, and prosperous future. We are all treaty people. Our commitment begins with acknowledging the truth so that we can move forward together towards reconciliation. Madam Deputy Clerk, may we have the motion to approve the agenda. Moved by Shell, seconded by Greenlaw. It is recommended that the agenda for the Development Services Committee meeting of Wednesday, April 5th, 2023 be received and approved. All in favor? Motion carried. Are there any disclosures of a pecuniary interest? Seeing none. Madam Deputy Clerk, may we have the motion to approve the minutes of the previous Development Services Committee meeting? Moved by Bard, seconded by Hutchinson. It is recommended that the draft minutes of the Development Services Committee meeting held on Wednesday, March 1st, 2023, be received and approved as printed and circulated. Thank you. All in favor? Motion carried. Okay, um, public meetings, I see there are none. Uh, public hearings, um, so I'm going to read the public hearings process explanation. <clears throat> I'll briefly summarize the procedure to be utilized for the meeting. Each application will be considered separately. The staff will advise of the purpose and effect of the application provide any relevant information, note any correspondence that has been received to date, and advise of any statement received from the applicant or if the applicant intends to make a presentation. If so, the applicant will then be given the opportunity to make a brief presentation. After the presentation, any members of the public that have been registered to provide comments, who or who are in the audience, will be given the opportunity to speak to the application being considered. The deputy clerk will advise of those who have registered. And finally, staff will confirm if any further correspondence has been received during the public hearing. There'll be a separate statement to be read at the start of each, each scheduled public hearing. With that, we will begin with the first public hearing scheduled to begin at 5.30, DS 2023-22, presented by Danielle Waters, Planner, RIA Minor Variance Application 2023-A09, Douglas Mark Group of 90 Ward Avenue. Uh, Ms. Waters, uh, please proceed. Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor. This is minor variance application 2023. Ex excuse me for one moment, Ms. Waters. Uh, you're not very uh, loud. I don't know if it's. 
Oh, maybe can IT can. Any, any better now? No, not much. Mm. Yeah. So we'll just check with IT here, uh, Ms. Waters, if you can hold for a moment. Okay, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> In the meantime, I'll uh, read the opening statement. Uh, the public, this public hearing uh, with regard to Douglas Mark Group is being held in accordance with the provisions of the Planning Act to obtain public comment with respect to the proposed application by the Markless, Mar Douglas Mark Group on lands municipally known as 90 Ward Avenue. Please be advised that this hearing is being digitally recorded for the purposes of the creation of a public record only after comments are received from the public, township staff, and requested agencies will the Development Service Services Committee make a decision on the proposed application. Um, Madam Deputy Clerk, have we received any um, correspondence on this matter? Yes, correspondence has been received from the Township of Armadante Manager of Development Engineering, dated March 9, and Operations Division, dated March 8, 2023. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Waters, would you like to try and proceed again? How does my sound sound now? It's still very low. Um, Madam Clerk, IT is working I remotely, apparently, so I don't know if there's any way them. I switched to headphones, so I'm not sure what else to. It's getting better. That, that, that is a bit. That is a bit better, um, Ms. Waters. Can you speak one more time, please? Sure, how about now? Still not great? Well, yeah. no, we, oh. we can make, we'll, we'll listen quietly, so, but talk as loud as you can if you can, please, yes. thank you. That would be okay. best, please, thank you. Okay, so this is a minor variance application 2023-A09. Um, Sorry, IT is just talking to me. Oh, okay, we'll we'll, uh, we'll wait. Oh, how does that sound? Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> okay. All right, perfect. Um, so 90 Ward Avenue, um, the zoning is Shoreline Residential, the official plan designation is Shoreline, and the current use is residential. Next slide. <clears throat> so the applicant is proposing a detached accessory building uh, with uh, several uh, variances. Um, so they have an interior side yard setback um, of 1.52 meters um, in two of the interior side lot lines. Um, that will make a bit of sense when we look at the aerial. Um, an increase in height, um, an increase in lot coverage, as well as floor area. Um, I've worked with the applicant to decrease <coughs> the size of their proposal um, that you can see there on the proposed. Um, to make it a little bit smaller, um, to be able to uh, provide um, uh, a recommendation for approval. Next slide. Um, so here we can see the aerial photo. Um, the property is on a cul-de-sac, um, <clears throat> which kind of gives it the two interior lot lines, which are kind of appear more like a front lot line. Uh, next slide. Um, and we can see the existing uh, zoning for shoreline. And then here we have the official plan designations. So from left to right, we have the uh, current township official plan, um, with, which is shoreline, the adopted official plan, which is shoreline as well. Um, and in the county official plan, it's designated rural. Next slide. 
Um, here we can see the applicant's site plan. In the top right corner there is the proposed garage uh, with the setback. Um, it'll be a little bit more clear with the, um, the site photos. Uh, next slide. Uh, and the floor plan and elevation drawings that have been revised um, for a smaller uh, a structure uh, to be able to recommend approval. Next slide. Um, so west on Ward Avenue, um, and then it's there kind of at the end of the cul-de-sac there, um, and then the notice sign posted. <clears throat> so here we can see the existing accessory building. Um, and then on the left there, so that's where the proposed accessory building will be going. So that building will be coming down. Uh, the middle photo is the existing boathouse, and then the right photo <coughs> is the existing dwelling. Um, and here we can see the applicant has kind of put some spray paint on the snow just to show the proposed location um, and, and where it is um, in relation to that existing accessory building there. Um, and then the right photo is kind of the most clear as to uh, where where you can see it. The, the photo is taken from the road um, and just kind of right in the middle there, you can see that existing accessory building. Um, and that's the kind of the location of the, the proposed structure there. Next slide. Um, so a couple things uh, to draw your attention to in the, condi the conditions. Um, Structure is not to be used for human habitation, commercial purposes, or home industry. Um, that the existing detached building to be demolished. Um, that um, a surveyor, professional engineer, CET, um, to provide um, pinning of the foundation to confirm the approved setback, um, and then a engineered block rating plan as well. Um, township staff have not received comments from Nottawasaga Valley Conservation Authority. Um, however, the um, property or the proposed structure is far enough away from the lake that it's not regulated, um, so we don't suspect to see any comments from them. And I'm here to answer any questions. Okay, do I have any questions from members? Yes, Councilor Young. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Lavoie. You haven't uh, received any uh, comments yet back from the NVCA, is that correct? Is that correct? Correct. correct. Um, I just uh, have some concerns about uh, the proximity to Bass Lake there. This may be more of an administrative question, but uh, uh, who made a decision uh, that uh, it would not affect, uh, given its uh, proximity to, uh, again, the, the Bass Lake, that who made a decision that it's not, the MVCEA would not be uh, affected, or at least uh, what they regulate? Was that planning or was that uh, the MVCA itself? To you, Deputy Mayor. Um so the uh, NVCA and Lake Simcoe, they don't necessarily always regulate the entire property um, on, on the lakes. Um, so in this particular property, the regulated area doesn't actually reach all the way up to the road. Um, it's only, it only covers part of the, the property and that's the, the data from NVCA. So that, that would be their own regulated area. So the proposed structure is outside of that regulated area, so they don't require permits from them to build mm -hmm. it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councilor Young. Um, Mr. Whitlip, please. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Um, further to what uh, Danielle had indicated, the um, regulated area mapping, it's prescribed by regulation under the Conservation Authorities Act, and it's very specific to mapping specific features um, such as around a lake that would be a hazard limit, um, uh, high water mark, potential um, wave uprush also could be included in there, but that's why it doesn't necessarily regulate an entire property. It's specific to the area of the um, anticipated hazard. Thank you very much for that comment. Any other uh, questions from members of council? No, seeing none. Um, do we have anyone from the public registered to speak on this matter, Madam Deputy Mayor? 
Oh, <laughs> Deputy Clerk. <laughs> Um, before that is a uh, question, uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor, uh, the agent, I believe, is has registered to speak, uh, Steve McGuire. Okay. If you'd Mr. like to Mr. McGuire, would you please step forward to the microphone? Thank you. Good evening. Okay, well, thank you very much for that explanation. Any questions of uh, Mr. McGuire? No? No? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's, uh, Councillor Shell is saluting your uh, ambition to create more children, I think. <laughs> thank you very much. Um, anyone else uh, from the public registered to speak? Madam Deputy Clerk? Uh, no, Mr. Mayor. No, Mr. Deputy Mayor. There were no additional registrations received. Any further comments during the uh, <laughs> proceeding of the, mo of no, the hearing? Mr. No, Mr. Deputy Mayor, there were no additional comments received during the meeting. Okay. Um, so from, from the perspective of any deliberation or commentary, uh, any comments or deliberation from members of council? Okay, seeing, seeing none, um, Madam Deputy Clerk, may I have a motion for this application? Moved by Clark, seconded by Young. It is recommended one that DS 2023-022, Danielle Waters, Planner, Reminder Variance Application 2023-A09, Douglas Mark Group, 90 Ward Avenue, be received and adopted. Two, that minor variance application 2023-A09, specifically for the purposes of a reduced interior side yard setback, increased floor area, and increased height for a detached accessory building on lands municipally known as 90 Ward Avenue Township of Oromodonte be approved subject to the conditions as outlined in DS 2023-022. Three, that the applicant be advised of committee's decision under the Secretary Treasurer's signature. Thank you very much. All in favor? Motion is passed. So the committee wishes to thank all those in attendance for your participation. A copy of the decision will mail to the applicant, agent, and anyone who has submitted written comments or provided oral comments during the hearing in regards to the application. And all the best. Thank you very much. Okay, with that, we will move on to um, application number 2023-A-10. Applicant is Manorhoran, Path Men Athen of 2388 Highway 11 South. This public hearing is being held in accordance with the provisions of the Planning Act to obtain public comments with respect to the proposed application by Manorhoran, Path Man and Ren on lands municipally known as 2388 Highway 11 South. Please be advised that this hearing is being digitally recorded for the purposes of the creation of a public record. Only after comments are received from the public, township staff, and re requested agencies will the Development Services Committee make a decision on the proposed application. Has there been any Correspondence received on this matter, Madam Deputy Clerk. Yes, correspondence received from the Township of Armadante Manager, Development Engineering, March 13, Operations Division, March 13, and Lake Simcoe Region Conservation Authority, March 16, 2023. Thank you very much. I'll now turn the meeting over to Catherine McCarroll, 
who is registered to speak to the application, excuse me, the intermediate planner who will explain the purpose and effect of the proposed application and any written statement received from the applicant. Ms. McCarroll, please proceed. Ms. McCarroll, we can see the presentation, but we cannot hear you. on Slack. IT is just in contact with the staff member. Thank you very much.
Uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor, we're live. Thank you very much. Um, so I'll now turn the meeting over to Catherine McCarroll, Intermediate Planner, who will explain the purpose and effect of the proposed application and any written statement received from the applicant. Ms. McCarroll, please proceed. Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor Lavoie. So the property is located at 2388 Highway 11 South. The property is zoned residential one and it's designated rural settlement area in the township's existing official plan and it's designated rural settlements in the adopted official plan. So the current use of the property is residential. There is a single detached dwelling with a basement apartment. Next one. So the applicants are proposing to legalize an existing basement apartment. And so they're seeking relief from section 5.4C, maximum floor area of the apartment dwelling unit. Um, so the maximum is typically 70 square meters and they've requested a size of 170.7 square meters. Next slide. They've requested a variance from section 5.16.1 C, which is enlargement, repair, or renovation of a non-complying building. So the existing dwelling is non-complying because it's located within the required 30 meter setback from the top of bank of the water course. So a non-complying building can be enlarged, repaired, uh, renovated, or replaced, um, provided that it does not in any other way increase the situation of non-compliance. And in this case, they are because they're proposing an accessory uh, dwelling unit within the existing non-complying dwelling, which is located five meters from the top of bank of the water course. And then they've also requested a variance. Oh, sorry, there's one more. Yep, section 5.16.1C, the second variance um, from that same section, which is um, to recognize that the existing dwelling is non-complying because it's located within the required 2.5 meter interior side yard setback. And um, they're proposing an accessory apartment within the uh, non-complying dwelling that's located 1.88 meters from the interior side lot one. Next slide. Um, so this is an aerial photo of the property. Um, it shows the dwelling in the middle um, and you can barely make it out, but there is a, ver a fairly long driveway that can accommodate the required parking for both the dwelling and the apartment. And you can't see it on this aerial, but there is a pretty significant and a pretty large water course that runs to the north and west of this property. Next slide. So this map shows the existing zoning of the property, which is residential one. Next slide. So um, here are the three maps. So the first one on the left, Township Official Plan Land Use, you can see that the property is currently designated Rural Settlement Area. The middle map is the Township Adopted Official Plan, where it's uh, designated Rural Settlement. And then the one on the right is the County Official Plan, uh, and it shows that that property is designated Settlement. Next slide. So this is the applicant's site plan. There is a room at the back of the dwelling that they are proposing to remove, and that's on the side that's closest to the water course. But other than that, they're not proposing any other exterior changes to the dwelling. Next slide. So this is the apartment floor plan. So the apartment takes up the entire lower level, and the entrance is at the back of the dwelling, which on this image is at the top. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, through the back of the dwelling. So you go in behind the garage. Um, so none of the neighbors would see that entrance. Next slide. So these are the applicant's elevation drawings. Um, so you can see all four sides there. Uh, as you can tell, um, you can't even uh, see or tell that there's a, an apartment within that dwelling. It looks just like a plain, simple, single detached dwelling. Um, next slide. So this map illustrates the water course that runs to the north and west of the property. So when I went to the property, there was a significant flow of water um, along the water course, uh, but the LSRCA reviewed the plans and they provided comments in support of the application. Next slide. 
So these two photos uh, shows the views looking both northeast and southwest along Highway 11. Next one. Uh, this is the public notice sign that was posted near the road. Next one. So the photo on the left shows the existing single detached dwelling and accessory apartment when viewing the property from the road. So as you can see from that photo, you can't even tell that there's an accessory apartment already within that dwelling. And then the photo on the right shows uh, the room that they're proposing to remove. They have it labeled as a porch on their plans, but it is enclosed. And that's on the side that's closest to the water course. Next slide. So these two photos illustrate the water course. So the photo on the left illustrates the water course um, that's along the rear lot line. And then the photo on the right shows um, that'd be the northwest corner of the property. Next slide. So the existing dwelling is non-complying because it has um, a reduced interior side yard setback. Um, so there are no proposed exterior additions proposed as part of this application. So they will not be encroaching any closer. And then the photo on the right um, shows the apartment entrance, which is located at the rear of the dwelling. Next slide. So it is recommended the minor variance application 2023 A10 be approved on the basis that the application is consistent with and conforms to provincial policies, the County of Simcoe and the Township official plans. It meets the four tests of the Planning Act and it represents good planning. So all the recommended conditions are listed on the screen. They are all standard conditions. Um, and I'm available if there are any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, do we have any questions for Ms. McCarroll at the present? Councillor Young. Thank you, um, Deputy Mayor Lavoy. Ms. McCarroll, this is a basement apartment, correct? Um, through you, Deputy Mayor Lavoy, yes, this is a basement apartment. Okay, that was a yes. Is it just the one means of uh, entrance and exit, the back stairs there? Correct. So it's at the rear of the existing dwelling. Okay, being this is a basement apartment, are they required to have a second means of escape in cases of fire? That is to say, a window large enough to uh, exit out of the uh, basement apartment. So we do have requirements in our zoning bylaw for a minimum uh, size of a window above grade, and they met that requirement. And there's also building code requirements that they would be subject to when they submit their building permit application. Okay, thank you. That was just for the benefit of those uh, watching that are thinking of, of course, of uh, constructing a basement apartment. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Young and Councillor Hutchison. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Lavoie, through you. Um, just, I wasn't sure from the pictures, but there was the one picture of the, the building, the back of the building where there was a uh, part to be removed. Does that include the rear entrance um, as well? Yeah, so through you, Deputy Mayor Lavoie, no, there, they're not removing the existing rear entrance. They're only removing the portion. Uh, so it looks like there's a window and there's a piece of wood that's leaning against the window. They're only removing that portion. Okay, great. Um, the other part that's to the left of it, where that entrance is located, <clears throat> they are keeping that. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Any further questions? No, seeing none. I uh, now ask the agent, Jerry Lloyd, who is registered to speak to the application, uh, if he wishes to provide any comment or indicate anything further to be added to the staff presentation. Madam Deputy Clerk, is the <coughs> Mr. Lloyd available? Oh, I see him now. Hello. Yes, Mr. Lloyd, please proceed. We can hear you. Hi, how are you? <clears throat> uh, unfortunately, I'm out of town, so... Um, everything that uh, Catherine has um, explained to you is, is correct. Um, any um, building codes uh, based on the, um, uh, the application that we'll be putting forward to 
uh, complete that basement apartment, we'll have all fire applications included. Um, and that back building will definitely be coming down um, as there is an issue with that uh, building being um, having access to windows in that apartment. So they need to be egressed. And to do that, that building will be coming down. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Lloyd. Any questions for Mr. Lloyd? Seeing none, thank you very much for your participation, sir. <clears throat> thank you. Um, I'd now ask township staff to advise of those from the public uh, via Zoom or in person that have registered to speak to the application. We will hear from each person who, who has registered to speak. Madam Deputy Clerk, uh, are there any parties? No, there were no additional registrations received, but if we could just confirm with the two um, people in the gallery uh, to confirm if they, they were wanting to provide comment for this application. The two members of the gallery are indicating that they do not wish to provide commentary Thank on this you. application. Thank you very much. <clears throat> um, are there any additional comments received? Um, Mr. No, Mr. Whitlip? Deputy Mayor, there are no additional comments received by email during the meeting. Thank you very much. Um, any further questions, comments, discussions from council members? Seeing none. Any deliberation with regard to this application? Seeing none. Uh, Madam Deputy Clerk, may we please have the motion read? Moved by Green Law, seconded by Bard. It is recommended one that DS 2023-23, Catherine McCarroll, Intermediate Planner, Reminder Variance Application 2023A10, Mano Heron, Pathaman Methan, 2388 Highway 11 South be received and adopted. Two, that minor variance application 2023A10, specifically for permission to legalize an existing basement apartment dwelling unit in a single detached dwelling and to recognize the increase in floor area of the apartment dwelling unit of 170.7 square meters, 1,837 square feet, permit an accessory dwelling unit within an existing non-complying single detached dwelling that is located five meters, 16.4 feet from a water course and 1.88 meters, 6.2 feet from the interior side lot line on lands municipally known as 2388 Highway 11 South, Township of Ormadante be approved subject to the conditions as outlined in DS 2023-23. Three, that the applicant be advised of the committee's decision under the Secretary Treasurer's signature. Thank you very much. Uh, all those in favor of the motion? The motion is carried. This completes the application process and closes this hearing. The committee wishes to thank all of those in attendance for your participation. A copy of the decision will be mailed to the applicant, agent, and anyone who has submitted written comments or provided oral comments during the hearing in regards to the application. <clears throat> thank you very much. And we will now move on to item 6C in the agenda, which is application 20. 23-A-11, the applicant being 8903 Properties, Inc., and the municipal address being 18 Small Crescent. This public hearing is being <coughs> held in accordance with the provisions of the Planning Act to obtain public comments with respect to the proposed application by 8903 Properties, Inc., on lands municipally known as 18 Small Crescent. Please be advised that this hearing is being digitally recorded for the purposes of the creation of a public record. Only after comments are received from the public, township staff, and requested agencies will the Development Services Committee make a decision on the proposed application. <clears throat> Madam Deputy Clerk, has there been any correspondence received on this matter? Yes, correspondence received from the Township of Armadante Manager of Development Engineering, March 9, Operations Division, dated March 22nd, and Lake Simcoe Region Conservation Authority, dated March 14, 2023. Thank you very much. 
Um, and I'll turn the matter over to um, Danielle Waters, planner, who will explain the purpose and effect of the proposed application and any written statements received from the applicant. Ms. Waters, please proceed. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. This is Minor Variance Application 2023-A11 for 18 Small Crescent. The uh, zone of the property is economic development, official plan designation is industrial, and the current use is vacant. Uh, so the applicant is proposing a recycling facility establishment um, on the property and they are looking as, as, so they are going through site plan approval right now. Um, one of those uh, indicated by planning staff is that they require uh, the minor variance for a reduced front yard planting strip. So the requirement is six meters. Uh, they are proposing one meter. Next slide. Uh, here is the aerial photo of the property, um, one of the larger properties on Small Crescent. Next slide. Uh, here we can see the existing uh, zoning of the property. So it's economic development within kind of an uh, economic development um, kind of uh, section of the township. Next slide. Uh, here we can see all of the official plans. Uh, so the current official plan for the township, it is uh, designated industrial. Um, in the adopted official plan, um, it is employment areas. Um, and the county official plan, it is rural. Hmm. Next slide. Uh, here we can see the applicant site plan. Um, so just um, a couple things to draw your attention to. So at the bottom of the map there, that's small crescent. Um, that's where the one meter planting strip is. Um, so they have that reduction there. However, there is still significant um, spacing between the road and the proposed structures. Um, in the site photos, you might be able to see it a bit. Um, the, the property is kind of, there's a, a large hill. So starting at the planting strip, it goes upwards um, towards the top of the hill where that uh, pink structure is the proposed recycling facility. Um, and in between that structure and the road, there's two stormwater management ponds. Um, so there's still significant um, uh, setback between uh, the, the road and the structures. Next slide. Uh, here we can see the elevation drawing of the uh, larger recycling facility establishment. Next slide. Uh, so east and west on small crescent and then the notice sign being posted. Uh, here we can see it, it's vacant land, um, uh, a little bit kind of bulldozed over, um, but the, there's no structures on the property yet. Um, here you can kind of see um, the the topography of the property. Um, I'm standing closer to the road. You can see the green sign there. Um, and that is the, the driveway into the property. Next slide. Um, and here is just a, a photo from the uh, driveway kind of looking at the road more so. Um, and in both photos, you can kind of see the topography is going upwards um, and the structure will still be significantly farther from the uh, from the road. Um, and so the the planting strip um, being smaller is is not um, uh, too much, especially with all of the storm the two stormwater management ponds as well. Next slide. Um, uh, so I've pro provided a recommendation for approval. Um, with the conditions below, um, noting uh, that the applicant is required to continue through um, site plan approval. Um, and I'm here to answer any questions. I believe that the agent is here and has a presentation if they had any additional information to provide to my presentation. Thank you very much for that presentation. Um, I just call upon the uh, agents, uh, Ivan Ho and Cameron Sellers who are registered to speak to the application to see if they have any additional comments or indicate if they have anything further to add to staff presentation. Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, am I from coming across okay? Yes, if you could speak just a little louder, that would be, that would be perfect. 
Is this better? Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Ivan Ho, and I'm a, a junior planner with uh, Innovative Planning Solutions here on behalf of 8903 Properties, Inc., uh, with respect to the minor, minor variance application at uh, 18 Small Crescent. I, I have a brief presentation for tonight uh, to provide additional context for this uh, minor variance application, uh, if um, we can pull it up. Bear with me, Mr. Chairman, as I pull up that present. Okay, and pulled up that presentation. Yes, of course. I believe we have the presentation up now, Mr. Ho, if you care to proceed. Thank you very much. Uh, you next slide, please. Uh, so just to review again, subject lands are located at 18 Small Crescent and are generally adjacent to industrial uses to the northeast uh, and west. Uh, again, the property is vacant with slopes uh, from higher elevations in the north towards the south with uh, the steeper slopes found at the south side. Uh, so next slide, please. So this is again, just reviewing the um, industrial designation of the uh, Township Official Plan. Uh, next slide. And this is just showing the current economic development zoning and zones of the surrounding properties. Next slide, please. So as described, the current minor variance application is being requested to support a rec uh, recycling establishment on the property, which will feature an office and weighing station in the north portion a central outdoor storage area and a recycling facility along the east property boundary. Here, I would like to note the significant front, uh, front yard size and 52 meter front setback of the recycling facility <coughs> to the property line. Next slide, please. Uh, for a site plan application submitted in August of 2022, engineering analysis were conducted to determine the most suitable location for the stormwater management ponds on the property which considered several factors such as constructability with the current grade transitioning um, and maximizing drainage area capture to meet the municipal municipality's stormwater management design standards. The analysis determined that the most suitable location for the stormwater management ponds would be along the property frontage. And as a result, the applicant is seeking the minor variance for reduced planting strip uh, uh, with adjacent to a front lot, front lot line of one meter. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so here I provided two additional site uh, street view images from Small Crescent to show the topography of the site. Just again, noting the significant slopes um, along the south of the property. Next slide, please. Uh, this slide uh, displays a zoning review and demonstrates that the proposed development conforms to all zoning provisions with the exception of the highlighted uh, planning strip width. Next slide, please. Uh, so the Planning Act permits minor variance is provided that four tests can be met. We believe that the proposed variance is minor and desirable for the area as it supports a use that reflects the existing industrial nature of the adjacent properties and is not anticipated to adversely impact the subject lands or surrounding properties. Uh, as indicated, the provided planting strip will accommodate the location of a stormwater management pond which in addition to the natural uh, topography of the site provides ample buffering and tr transitioning along small crescent. Uh, next slide, please. And similarly, we believe that the application conforms to the intent of the zoning bylaw and official plan 
as the variant supports an industrial use in an industrial uh, designated area and accommodates the location of a stormwater management pond, which contributes again to buffering and transitioning. Next slide, please. Uh, so overall, it's our opinion that the application represents good planning and supportive of the municip uh, municipal staff's recommendations outlined in the staff report. Next slide, please. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak and uh, myself and Cameron are available for questions should there be any. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Ho. Uh, do we have any questions from council members for staff or for the registrant, please, uh, Councillor Hutchison. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Lavoie. Through you to Mr. Ho. Do you, if you could bring the slide back up. Sorry, I see the deck's gone. <laughs> Derek, I'm sorry. Uh, I was wanting to look at slide eight again, which showed the variances. It went by very quickly, and I wasn't able to get a full view of it. Through the Deputy Mayor to Councillor Hutchison, maybe um, I, I have staff's presentation queued up, and I think that one. Um, will also contain a similar table. Sorry, was that, was that what you were looking for, Councillor? Uh, Mr. Ho's presentation was showing uh, an increase in the number of parking spots and a couple of other things but I wasn't able to catch it because it went by quickly. Okay, th those weren't matters that were subject to variances. Okay. Those okay. are just statistics I believe okay, he was providing. Fine. That's the, only, fine. the only variance is the one listed, which is for the planting. Script. Okay, excellent. Thank you, yep. then. Thank you for that. Thank you very much for the question and the clarification. Um, Councillor Shell. Yes, uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor Lavoie, through you. Um, I guess either to Mr. Ho, or Mr. Whitlip, the um, perhaps maybe more to you now, Mr. Ho. What uh, materials are recycling or planning to be recycled at this site? Uh, through you, Mr. Uh, Deputy Chair, uh, or um, to the Councillor. It's, it's sorry, it's Cameron Sellers. So the um, the. 8903 properties uh, operates two recycling establishments already, one in Midland and one in Utopia. So this will be the third one to sort of service the uh, Oro and Aurelia locations. So it's mainly construction, um, let's say debris that comes in and gets sorted. Um, so trucks come in, they get sorted into, uh, you know, wood, drywall, plastics, uh, metal, et cetera. No hazardous chemicals. Um, and then they get shipped out to uh, to the appropriate uh, recycling facilities to further for further processing. Okay, thank you. I was just concerned about what might be uh, leaching into those uh, uh, storm management uh, ponds. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much, Councillor uh, Shell. And I believe you answered uh, someone else's question with that. Uh, any other questions for staff or for the representative? Um, no, seeing none. Are there any persons um, via Zoom or in person registered to speak to the application, Madam Deputy Clerk? Uh, no, Mr. Chair, there were no additional registrations received. Thank you very much. Um, nope. <coughs> Anyone in the audience? Uh, no, I see no one in the audience uh, with verbal comments for this matter. Um, any further correspondence being received, uh, Mr. Whitlip? No, thank you. Um, any further comments or questions from council members or staff? No. Um, any deliberation on behalf of the um, council with regard to this matter? Seeing none. May I have the uh, motion read, Madam Deputy Clerk, for this uh, application? Thank you. Moved by Hutchinson, seconded by Shell. It is recommended one that DS 2023-021, Danielle Waters, Planner, Re Minor Variance Application 2023-A11-8903 Properties, Inc., 18 Small Crescent, be received and adopted. Two, that Minor Variance Application 2023-A11 specifically to permit a reduced front yard planting strip on lands municipally known 
as 18 Small Crescent Township of Oramadante be approved, subject to the conditions as outlined in DS 2023-021. Three, that the applicant be advised of committee's decision under the secretary treasurer's signature. Thank you very much, Madam Deputy Clerk. Um, all those in favor of the motion? The motion is carried. This completes the application process and closes this hearing. The committee wishes to thank all those who, in their attendance for participation. A copy of the decision will be mailed to the applicant, agent, and anyone who has submitted written comments or provided oral comments during the hearing in regards to the application. Thank you very much. We'll move on to the next public hearing matter. Uh, application 2023-B-02, Donald and Sherry Hubbard, 404 Ridge Road East, this public hearing is being held in accordance with the provisions of the Planning Act to obtain public comments with respect to the proposed application by Donald and Sherry Hubbard on lands municip municipally known as 404 Ridge Road East. Please be advised that this meeting is being digitally recorded for the purposes of the creation of a public record. Only after comments are received from the public, township staff, and requested agencies Will the Development Services Committee make a decision on the proposed application? Madam Deputy Clerk, has there been any uh, correspondence received on this matter? Correspondence from the Township of Armadante Manager of Development Engineering, March 13, Lake Simcoe Region Conservation Authority, March 21, Township of Armadante Building Division, March 22, Operations Division, dated March 22, and Bridge Gas, dated March 27, County of Simcoe Transportation and Engineering dated March 30, and County of Simcoe Planning Department dated April 3rd, 2023. Thank you very much. <coughs> With that, I'll now turn the meeting over to Catherine McCarroll, Intermediate Planner, who will explain the purpose and effect of the proposed application and any written statement received from the applicant. Ms. McCarroll, please proceed. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Lavoie. The property is located at 404 Ridge Road East. The property is zoned Agricultural, Rural and Environmental Protection, and it's designated Agricultural and Environmental Protection 2 in the township's existing official plan, and it's designated Agricultural in the adopted official plan. Uh, the current use of the property is Agricultural. So the applicants are requesting consent to sever and merge lands for the purposes of a boundary adjustment. So the lands to be severed from 404 Ridge Road East and merged with 400 Ridge Road East would have a frontage of approximately 65 meters, a depth of 152 meters, and an area of approximately one hectare. Um, and the current use of those lands is agricultural. The lands to be retained uh, would have an area of approximately 54.4 hectares. And the total merged lands would have an area of approximately 1.8 hectares and would be for residential use. Next slide. So this is an aerial photo of the property. So as you can see, the majority of the property is farmed. There is a separate field right at the corner of Ridge Road East and Line 8 South. So that is the field that they're proposing to sever into and merge half of it with 400 Ridge Road East, which is that residential lot that is just to the east of that field. Next slide. So this map illustrates the existing zoning of the property. So the majority of it is zoned agricultural rural, and there is a portion of EP which serves as a buffer around a water course. Next slide. So the map on the left-hand side shows the township official plan, the current township official plan, which is um, primarily designated agricultural and there's a very small portion of environmental protection too at the north um, part. Um, the middle map shows the township adopted official plan, which shows the property entirely designated agricultural. And then the map on the right-hand side shows the county official plan uh, where it's also entirely designated agricultural. 
So this is the applicant's proposed boundary adjustment. So the portion that is uh, marked up in red is the portion that they're proposing to sever off of the farmland and then merge with the residential lot, which is at 400 Ridge Road East. Next slide. So these two photos um, show the view looking both northeast and southwest along Ridge Road East. Next slide. And then these two photos show the views looking both north and south along Line 8 South. Next slide. So this is the um, public notice sign that was posted in front of the lands to be severed. Next slide. So these photos show um, the lands to be retained at 404 Ridge Road East. So the photo on the left shows all their existing agricultural buildings. And then the photo on the right shows their existing dwelling. Next slide. So these photos show the lands to be severed and merged with a neighboring residential lot. So based off of the aerial imagery, this field has been farmed for many years. So staff have concerns with the impact of the proposed boundary adjustment on the agricultural land. Uh, lot adjustments are permitted in prime agricultural areas for legal or technical reasons. And then the PPS defines legal or technical reasons uh, as severances for the purposes of easements, corrections of deeds, uh, quick claims, and minor boundary adjustments. Um, so minor is assessed based off of the impact on the agricultural land. So this impact can be assessed through an agricultural assessment in a planning justification report to assess the quality of the soils for agricultural production and evaluate the potential impact of the boundary adjustment on both the severed lands and the remaining agricultural field at Line 8 South and Ridge Road East. So the photo on the left shows the benefiting lands, which is a residential lot, which is 400 Ridge Road East. And then the photo on the right shows the water course that runs to the east of the benefiting land. And I included this photo because uh, staff have had discussions with the agent and we asked him if he would consider doing the boundary adjustment on the other side of the residential lot. Um, but uh, they said that it was not their intention because that portion is zoned environmental protection um, due to the woodland and water course. Next slide. So it is recommended that consent application 2023 BO2 be deferred to provide the applicants the opportunity to address township planning staff comments. So the deferral would give the applicants the opportunity to obtain an agricultural assessment and a planning justification report to assess the impact of the boundary adjustment on both the severed and retained land. I'm available if there are any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Um, I now ask the agent, uh, Jeremy Hubbard, who is reg registered to speak to the application to see if has any additional comments or indicate anything further to add to the staff presentation, please, uh, Mr. Hubbard. Thank you. Hey, uh, nice to see some new faces here. I think pretty well. <laughs> I remember you from high school. I knew you were about it. Um, I'm Jeremy Hubbard. Uh, I'm the son of my dad's own farm. Uh, the property that we want to merge on So the boundary adjustment in question is property off my dad's farm merging to my sister's property. We want to make the property larger for inheritance purposes, as my sister across the road has a much larger property. At 73, my dad's doing everything he can to be fair for all five of his kids, while simultaneously trying to keep the family farm intact. We are going to start <coughs> trees this fall on the subject property to return this poor land back to its natural heritage. We have already converted five poor acres on this farm back to its natural heritage. I hope you accept our application and thanks for your time and I'm available for any questions. But one way or another, like whether it passes or not, we're gonna stop farming that because it's between the ridge and the waterway and it's gravel and we've been working it just to keep the land open, but we're gonna, using one half and either way we are going to plant trees and let 
or use the other half. And if we have to do more to show that it is for land, that's I understand any any concerns. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, just one moment, please. Um, any questions uh, for staff or for Mr. Hubbard from council? No, seeing none, you may return. Thank you. Um, I'd ask the township staff, Madam Deputy Clerk, if there are those from the public via Zoom or otherwise registered to speak. Uh, no, Mr. Chair, there were no additional registrations received. Thank you very much. And I presume there's no one else from the audience uh, who wishes to speak? No, thank you very much. <laughs> um, any additional correspondence received during the course of the hearing? Thank you very much, Mr. Whitlam. Um, any further, any comments or questions uh, from council? Any, yes, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor Lavoie. Um, the, the, the assessment uh, that you want done um, in order for this to be considered for approval, uh, Ms. McCarroll, um, what's, what's the cost and the time that it takes for that to, to run its course? So through you, Deputy Mayor uh, Lavoie to Mayor Greenlaw, I'm actually not sure what the cost would be. They would have to reach out to a consultant to get a quote um, to see what it would be. Okay. So just kind of to, to maybe, if, if you wouldn't mind, Ms. McCarroll, ex explain what it is we're asking in order for this to be considered. I know we're asking for it to be deferred or can it be done Th simply through working with township staff on 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 coming to a resolution one way or the other. So I know I'm not personally trained and I don't believe anyone in our group is trained to assess the quality of soils to see how they are for agricultural production. So basically the purpose of the agricultural assessment would be to assess the quality of soils for agricultural production and determine whether or not that boundary adjustment would have an impact on um, that agricultural land that's at the corner of Line 8 South and Ridge Road East. No, thank you. Yeah, I think um, this council would all agree if the land is challenged uh, as an agricultural use, um, then it would be they would definitely be in support of, of the alignment. I guess the one concern that um, council is, is is setting precedent because we had a similar um, item like this come up before and in, in, in su severing uh, lands into smaller chunks that, that leave 100 acres. So um, Mr. Whitlib, would you care to comment on, on this to try and help council better understand the situation on the deferral at this point? Yeah, certainly. So, um, as Ms. McCarroll mentioned in her presentation, um, these are prime agricultural lands. Um, prime agricultural lands in the broad sense. So that's a that's a broad designation um, based on um, n national scale soil mapping. Um, prime agricultural lands are given the highest level of protection um, for any type of land in Ontario pursuant to provincial policy. Um, you've probably heard statistics to the effect of that Ontario loses 100 acres of farmland um, a day. Um, so uh, some of that occurs through bits and pieces, not just you know subdivisions consuming farmland. So the overall policy objective is to um, prevent the loss of farmland and to protect that land from being converted to other uses and taken out of uh, production for food, fiber, what, what have you. Um, now we've heard from, certainly from the applicants, they, they know the land better than anyone in this, in this room. They farm the land and they, they <coughs> um, so the, in, the intent of the um, agricultural assessment from staff's perspective 
um, would be to provide an expert opinion in terms of the impact. If we're going to take a portion of land away from that farm, what is the impact on the viability of the on the balance of that farm? Um, heard a little bit of information from the applicant that that area that's being proposed to be merged with the resident residential lot may not be the best part of that farm. We also heard that that field may be sterilized and not farmed um, further. And that's certainly a concern too. Um, when you remove a, a piece of land from a tight corner of a farm, it makes it that much more difficult to operate equipment and maneuver and that sort of thing. So there may be factors here that, um, See, the committee needs ultimately to be satisfied that what's happening here is not going to undermine the viability of the balance of the farmland. So there, there may be additional information, um, um, certainly that can be provided through an expert report um, um, per performed <coughs> by an agronomist, an agricultural impact assessment. Um, and alternatively, I think the question um, from you, Mr. Mayor, um, was moving towards is there additional information that potentially the applicants themselves can provide in detail um, with respect to uh, that corner of the farm, um, what its function is now, uh, and what its capability is, and how removing that corner from the farm might impact the rest of the farmland. So um, that's something, um, certainly if there's additional questions to the applicant, applicants, um, this would be an opportunity, but it's also something that um, staff would want to see um, documented as part of the record. So whether it's, again, the form of an agronomist report or if the committee is satisfied that there may be an opportunity for the applicants themselves to further explain what's going on and how that farm operates, um, that might afford the opportunity um, as well. So, you know, uh, pursuant to um, uh, comments that have been received from the County of Simcoe, who in, uh, in their review of planning matters, essentially the role of the county um, is among other things, not only to comment from a county official plan perspective, but they also have the delegated authority of the province. So they're, they're wearing the hat of the province when they comment on planning applications and the comments that um, came in from the county of Simcoe echoed um, some of what I've just indicated that it would be up to the township to satisfy themselves whether this is in fact minor or not. And we heard Ms. McCarroll say that um, the question of minor when you're dealing with boundary adjustments is less about the size of the piece of farmland that's being swapped and more about what the impact or non-impact of that swap is. Well, thank, thank you very, very much. I appreciate that. May I have a supplemental um, chair? Yes, of course, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Um, so uh, to Ms. Because uh, I'm brutal, thing. Miss, Mr. and Mrs. Miss Hubert and her brother, correct? She's married, first of all. Yeah, oh, but my apologies. Okay. Um, uh, so I, I, I think what um, the reason why staff's recommending a deferral, um, we, we want things to work for what our, our, our residents have, but we want to make sure it goes through the process and it's consistent. Um, Although there are similarities to a, a case that came back last term before council that, that council supported, uh, county appealed it and it got reversed. So we want to make sure we get this right. And it's not to say there are similarities, but there are also differences in, in the two applications. So what, what I would like to make sure is is that we work with staff and, and, and find it out so that we've dotted the I's, cross the T's and get it right. And we're not setting precedent that opens a Pandora's box of uh, throughout the township. So um, appreciate you coming here and, and giving us uh, the information. Um, uh, I would sooner defer it as the staff recommends than vote up or down on this tonight because I don't want you to have to go back and start all over and, and, and incur the costs again. Yes, no, definitely. Please, would you step forward, though, to the podium? Thank you very much. So my one question I have is when we had worked on one of our other farms before, we had it, uh, when the application passed, we had to meet certain criteria. Is there any way just to keep the process moving along? And I just know how things are <laughs> uh, That it 
until that is met, it can't proceed. <coughs> but we can. I don't, is there anything that could be added into it that I have to meet that in the application? But it could move ahead as long as that was met. Yeah, I, I and I'm, I'm not trying to dodge the, the question, but I'd sooner defer it to uh, either. Um, Ms. McCarroll or, or Derek to answer that because they're, they are the experts yeah. of this field, not, not myself or not, I don't want to take anything away from the rest of my colleagues either, but it's, uh, they are the experts. So if you wouldn't mind answering that, Derek. Thank you, through you, Mr. Mayor, to the rest of the committee and, and to the um, applicants. Um, so I think the question is, could something like um, the agricultural impact assessment um, be included as a condition of, of approval. And certainly there are circumstances where the committee, um, as a condition of a decision, of an approval decision, requests a piece of information. And that's usually to, to tie up a loose end or, or clarify something. And from staff's perspective in this case, um, the question of impact on the retained farmland is more a fundamental policy question. So from staff's perspective, we'd like to see that addressed upfront before a decision um, is made rather than as, as a condition um, that, you know, because when you're imposing something like that as a condition, mm -hmm. it's usually in a case where you're otherwise confident that there's going to be a, a positive outcome, but you need some details still clarified. And I, from staff's perspective, that's that not exactly the case here. Yeah. Also okay. for the report on the land, uh, like we get the soils tested with Westick and Co-op and that, do they count? Or Well, I, th I think that's what I was, um, sorry, through you, Mr. Please Mayor, to the chair, rather, um, to the committee um, and, and to the applicants. I think that I was suggest, what I was suggesting is um, recognizing that the, the um, applicants are, are bona fide farmers. Um, they may have access to technical information that may be of assistance to staff in, in the committee. Um, so from staff's perspective, the, the easy ask is to get that um, agronomist's report, that agricultural impact report from an expert. Um, however, if there is um, sort of quantifiable or other useful information um, that the applicants are able to put together themselves and, and submit as a package of information to help um, justify and address the issues, staff would be happy to, to consider that. Okay, well, thank you. And uh, can I just make one more comment? Yes, a supplementary. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, so um, Mr. Hubert, I, I, I'd, I'd say that, you know, Ms. McCarroll's done a great job and, and, and she comes right down and says that the applicants, the opportunity to address, and so they'll, they'll help explain what, ne what they would need to meet and, and, and guide you th through as, as best as they can. Um, but if you work with them, uh, they, will, they will do everything we can to fulfill what, what your desires are as long as we fee meet the policy standards with, with uh, the province, okay? But I, I do appreciate you coming tonight and, and, and giving input, and it's, it's valuable to all of us. Thank you. Thank you very much for that commentary. Any further um, debate or questions? Uh, Councillor Young? Yeah, thank you, Deputy <coughs> Mayor Lavoy. I'm just curious about a couple of things, Mr. Hubbard. Uh, when was that patch of land or that section of land last uh, farmed? Like it's, it was oh, oh, sorry. Sorry, could you please step up to the mic? Because we need a record of it. It's just... Uh, uh, that, that corner field yeah. is still farmed. Oh, it's still being farmed. What's the current crop? Uh, so this year's a wheat. Wheat, yeah. That's why I said we're going to start planting trees and stuff this fall. Okay, but has it produced every year? The what you would expect in terms of crop, okay. or if so, this corner you got Pearls Creek, yes, and then outside the ridge is the drop off, and this yeah. is like when I say the gravel knoll, like her her back hill, and you can barely walk down the slope steep. Yeah, and if you know gravel knolls around Laurel, they're <laughs> gravel. Um, so you literally we just have to clean, so it looks nice, but now that we want for my sister to use, like I said, we're going to plant trees and stuff anyways, yeah. and then we'll just keep going with this process and mm. hope eventually we can pass it, if not do a yeah. long-term lease or something, but I would yeah. rather do this eventually. Sure. No, I can appreciate it. It's a family matter. I just, has been indicated already to you by Mayor uh, 
Greenlaw, I just don't know if the county would uh, find uh, uh, the issue of inheritance, uh, you know, a, a sufficient reason to to permit it uh, to be severed. I, I just likely, but I, I when you've brought that forward, I don't. I, again, I don't know yeah, if they'd that's find that. To, the and I don't. No, I understand family. So uh, thank you. Thank you very much for that explanation and participation. Uh, Councilor Clark. Uh, through you, Deputy Mayor, to the uh, uh, proponents here. Can you just help us maybe as council understand if 180 meters, which I think is what you outlined, that's yeah. still going to be part, would you still be able to travel that with machinery in order to farm the remaining portion of that corner? Uh, what's remaining? Right. Supplementary or no? Nope. It's more of a, a, a comment. I think um, at some point, this is this is just me not speaking as anyone from the, the council. It sounds like the land will not be used for farming because of the poor quality of soil in that particular region. Um, so I would support um, having technical data provided from uh, the Hubbards, but not necessarily having to pay for an external consultant. I don't think that's uh, fair for us on council here. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, I think uh, any further deliberation or comment? So I think it's reasonable to say that um, there, I put this to you, Mr. Whitlib, uh, would it be reasonable to say that in a, in an and as an alternate to the uh, uh, the report from an external consultant, if the proponent is able to produce sufficient agricultural um, land value, soil quality information, thank you, <laughs> that 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 would be satisfactory to the planning department through the the chair to to the committee. So that would certainly be helpful um, yes satisfactory okay. would, would be determined based on staff's uh, review of it and whether right you know we we may need to you know reach out to county staff uh, perhaps uh, to see if they have any other opinions on it but from staff's perspective the the, the recommendation for the deferral okay. to address staff's comments um, probably if if the committee <coughs> um, wishes to defer um, that recommendation would stand. Staff comments in the, in the broadest sense are to address concerns about um, impacts on the viability of the, the remaining farm. Um, okay. the, the report then goes on to detail that a way that that can be addressed is through an expert report. But again, if there's certainly um, uh, verifiable or quantifiable information that the applicants are able to provide to assist staff in that regard, then um, we'd be happy to review it, and again, if necessary, reach out to our colleagues, potentially, um, to see if we can get some assistance, because we, we don't have agronomists on staff. Um, Correct. But uh, um, we all have a little bit of experience, um, but I'm not a farmer, and uh, I don't believe any of our planning staff are either. Councillor Hutchison. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor. And it's more of a comment, um, and I hear you, Councillor Clark. Um, I just listening um, to uh, Mr. Whitlib and listening to the data that he's providing us, um, and given that it is currently registered as prime agricultural land, I do feel that we need to be very careful uh, in this particular decision. Uh, even though I completely <coughs> empathize with what you're asking and, and, you know, would fully want to be able to help you do this. I, I for one, think we should have the expert 
uh, opinion on this, just given the sensitivity of the fact that it is, um, it is, you know, prime ag land. There's a lot of oversight on this from the provincial government, from the county. And I think as uh, the committee here, we really have to have uh, the technical data and uh, for our planning staff and for us to make a very well grounded decision. Thank you very much for that commentary. Yes, um, please. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I understand you got to have your and all your dots and everything crossed. So. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yes, Councillor Clark. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, through you, Deputy Mayor Lavoie, uh, to Councillor Hutchinson, I think it's important to remember the comments um, from Mr. Whitlib that those, egg, those lands being designated as prime agricultural lands are done at a national level. Mm -hmm. So they're not actually taking inventory to say, yes, all of this land in Ormodonte is actually really good. Um, because from that study, you can find lands that are maybe grade six, seven, or eight that a farmer will tell you is actually phenomenal farmland, um, where there's farms that are designated as grade one that you don't get the same yield out of. So it's, it's important to remember that those prime agricultural lands are not actually designated by someone who's actually worked the farm and not ne and not necessarily an expert either. Thank you very much. Councilor Young. Yeah, thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor. I, um, how long has your father been farming that property? Uh, he bought it in the 70s. I don't have my, my little calculator here with me, I guess it's 30 some, 40 years, but uh, um, 53. I'm sorry, who was that? 53. Well, that's what I said. I said yes, 50. I know. I said 53. Just for the sake of clarity. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. We settled in the world. Yes. So I'm fifth generation farmer in Florida. Good for you and uh, your family. Um, I can certainly appreciate your father's position in terms of avoiding any conflict uh, within the family in terms of who, hold, hold, who owns what and how much sort of thing, and uh, he's a wise man to uh, tr try to resolve the matters now. But I think we're missing one expert in this matter, and that's the, the father himself, who's farmed that uh, property for years and years and years, and no disrespect to you, but if he's prepared to come uh, and, and give his expertise on, on the, the... He won't <laughs> come, okay? <laughs> oh, I'm 70, I'm 71, and here I am, you know, and... Uh, Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. We'll go with the technical experts then, I guess, and uh, and provide a uh, opinion or decision. No, I, I again, no disrespect to you, but uh, your father, I have a great deal of respect for, given the given the uh, number of years he's uh, he's farmed that property. So as I have to all other farmers, including uh, the people who uh, I bought the farm off myself. So thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, and. Uh, Councilor Hutchison. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Lavoie, through to Mr. Clark. Um, and I really appreciate your comments as well. I just, um, I just think that we're looking at a precedent here that we have to be very careful how we're going to move forward on this particular decision. And I completely appreciate your, your input and your uh, point of view, but I'm, I'm just feeling we have to be very careful here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, with that, um, I think we'll close the commentary. Thank you very much for your comments. Very much appreciated. Thank you. Okay, Madam Deputy Clerk, may we have the motion read? Moved by Young, seconded by Hutchinson. It is recommended one that DS 2023-24, Catherine McCarroll, Intermediate Planner, reconsent application 2023-B02, Sherry and Don Hubbard, 404 Ridge Road East be received and adopted. Two, that consent application 2023-B02, to permit a boundary adjustment on the lands municipally known as 404 Ridge Road East, Township of Armadante be deferred to provide the applicants the opportunity to address Township planning staff comments. Three, that the applicants be advised of the committee's decision under the Secretary Treasurer's signature. 
Thank you very much. All those in favor? Thank you, the motion is carried. This uh, completes the application process and closes this hearing. Uh, the committee wishes to thank all those for coming today to present and to the applicant themselves. Um, and a copy of the decision will be mailed to the applicant, agent, and anyone who has submitted written comments or provided oral comments during the hearing in regards to the application. So, thank you. With that, we'll move on to, well, I think we've uh, at the back end of the uh, agenda. Yep, we move on to uh, item 7A, which is a report DS2023-027 from Andy Karaskakis, Senior Planner, Site Plan Control Bylaw Update, uh, refer to item 5A. Of, uh, of dated 040523 of the council agenda. Uh, Madam Deputy Clerk, may we have a motion for item 7A, please? Moved by Shell, seconded by Hutchinson. It is recommended one that DS 2023 27, Andy Karaskakis, Senior Planner, recite plan control bylaw update be received and adopted. Two, that site plan control bylaw number 2019-056, a bylaw to designate areas of the township of Ormadante as site plan control areas, as amended by bylaw 2020-038, be further amended in order to exclude certain forms of development from site plan control pursuant to the Planning Act as amended by Bill 23, as outlined in DS 2023-027. Three, that the appropriate draft bylaw 2023-022 be brought forward for council's consideration. <coughs> Thank you very much. Uh, any comments or questions from a uh, member of council with regard to this site plan control bylaw update? No. Can we have a vote please on the um, <coughs> Excuse me, site plan, plan control bylaw, all in favor? Motion carried. Uh, the next matter is item 7B, uh, minor variance application 2023-A-03, David and Danielle Nicoletta, 67A Huron Woods Drive, previously from the March 1st, 2023 Development Services Committee meeting, deferred to May 3rd, 2023 De Development Services Committee meeting. Um, at the last Development Services Committee meeting, the motion passed uh, was to defer the matter to today's meeting. Uh, Mr. Whitlib, do you have any comment uh, as it is noted on the agenda cover sheets that the report is to now come back to the next Development Services Committee meeting of May 3rd, 2023. Thank you, um, through you, Mr. Chairman, to the committee. Um, the applicant, um, applicants and their agent have been actively working with staff in reviewing the situation, um, looking at, um, uh, they did, um, uh, provide a bit of a redesign of the um, structure and its uh, positioning somewhat. Also um, wish to, they wish to look at the sight lines that were um, cited as a concern as well. Um, met with planning staff and operations staff and um, it was uh, mutually agreed that there may be an opportunity to uh, re-look at the site when the, the snow melts and the snow banks are gone, which I think we're closer to now. Um, so that's why I did not come back um, to this meeting as initially directed by the committee, um, but not for lack of effort um, of going back to the drawing board on the part of the applicants. They're making a, a concerted effort to try and address the, the concerns. And um, it's anticipated that uh, they'll be able to resubmit something for consideration in time for the next meeting. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. <coughs> Mr. Whitlib. There'll be no discussion or debate on this matter as it's just put over until the next uh, um, 
Development Services Committee meeting. Um, pleased to hear that the parties are are working together and participating with uh, with staff. Um, with that, we've uh, completed the items on the agenda. Uh, the next meeting date uh, will be Wednesday, May 3rd, 2023. Um, Madam Deputy Clerk, may I have a motion to adjourn? Moved by Clerk, seconded by Young. It is recommended that we do now adjourn at 7.09 p.m. All in favor? Well, it's carried. Thank you, everyone. Um, Mr. Mayor, back to you for the council meeting following the Development Services Committee meeting. Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor Lavoie. Uh, I'd like to call this meeting to order. Uh, Madam Clerk, may I please have a motion to adopt the agenda, please? Moved by Young, seconded by Lavoie. Be it resolved that the agenda for the council meeting of Wednesday, April 5th, 2023, be received and adopted. All in favor? That's carried. Does anyone have any pecuniary interest to uh, identify at this time? Seeing none, may we have a motion for the minutes of the previous meeting, Madam Clerk? Moved by Clark, seconded by Hutchinson. Be it resolved that the draft minutes of the council meeting held on Wednesday, March 1, 2023, be received and adopted as printed and circulated. Any changes to the minutes that anyone has seen? None. All in favor? That's carried. May we please have a motion to approve the recommendations of tonight's DSC meeting, Madam Clerk? Moved by Bard, seconded by Young. Be it resolved that the recommendations of the Development Services Committee meeting held on Wednesday, April 5th, 2023, be adopted. All in favor? That's carried. May we please have a motion for the bylaw for item 5A, please? Moved by Shell, seconded by Clark. Be it resolved that bylaw 2023-022 be read a first, second, and third time, passed, be engrossed by the deputy clerk, signed and sealed by the mayor. Any questions or comments regarding 5A? Seeing none, I'll call the vote. All in favor? That's carried. May we please have a motion for the confirmation bylaw, Madam Clerk? Moved by Hutchinson, seconded by Bard. Be it resolved that bylaw number 2023-025, being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the council meeting held on Wednesday, April 5th, 2023, be read a first, second, and third time, passed, being grossed by the deputy clerk, signed and sealed by the mayor. All in favor? That's carried. May we have a motion to adjourn, please? Moved by Lavoie, seconded by Shell. Be it resolved that we do now adjourn at 7.11 p.m. All in favor? Opposed? That's carried. Thank you, everyone. Have a great evening.